Hello everyone and welcome back to Learning with Jelly Lesson 19. Today we are going to talk about prop core and this is going to be an essential procedure in order to do some exploratory data analysis before you run a model like logistic regression. So some of our objectives for today, we're going to explain what prop core is and exactly what it's used for. We're going to talk about the Pearson correlation coefficient look at the syntax needed in order to run the procedure, and then we're going to also print out some visuals using prop core. Now, what is it used for? So prop core measures the strength of a linear relationship between two continuous numeric variables. So it helps us figure out if two of our predictor variables or independent variables are related to one another, or how closely correlated are our predictor variables with our target variables. So one of the main uses for prop core is when we're trying to check assumptions for linear regression. So say for instance, you've been tasked to run a simple linear regression, a multiple linear regression, there are some things that you need to check for in order to see if that model is appropriate. And one is going to be whether or not there is a linear relationship between X and Y. So does your predictor or your X variable, is it linear related to your target or your Y variable? And there's also some other assumptions in linear regression, such as homoscedacity, independence of observations, and normality, okay? But we are going to focus on using this procedure to see if there's a linear relationship between X and Y. So the syntax is going to be basic, okay? It's going to be proc core, data equals, your data set name. Var is going to be a list of the numeric variables that you want to look at correlations for. And width are going to be the list of numeric variables to do correlations with. So both the var and the with statement are optional. By default, if you just run this with prop core in your data set, it's going to look at correlations across all of your numeric variables. Okay. All right. So when we say that by default, it's looking at your Pearson correlation coefficient, this is what we're talking about. So there's a formula that's going to look at the mean, the standard deviation amongst these two variables. It's going to square some things and take the square root, okay? So this is the actual formula that represents the Pearson correlation coefficient. But what I want you to know is pretty much what we mean by a strong negative correlation versus a strong positive correlation, okay? So it's on a scale of negative one to one where negative one means that I have a strong negative correlation. So we can see an example of a negative correlation in this middle graph here, where I see that as one variable increases, in this case, X, another variable decreases, in this case, Y, okay? So this is what we mean by a negative correlation. And so it's going to have as one increases, the other decreases. A positive correlation is both of them varying directly. So as one goes up, the other also goes up. So in this case, in my first graph, I see what we call a positive correlation. Okay. And something that may have no, no correlation at all is just a bunch of random scattered points, okay? So this Pearson correlation coefficient is going to be negative one when they're strong, strongly negatively associated and a positive one when they're strongly positively associated and everything in between. Something that's no correlation is something close to zero, okay? But this right here could definitely be something like a negative 0.9, right? Something like this could definitely be something like a positive 0 0.85, okay? So when we talk about correlation, keep in mind that correlation does not equal causation. So we never say that one variable causes another variable. We just say that they're correlated or associated with one another. Okay, so now that we got that down pat, let's actually run this in SAS. So the question that we're here to ask is, is there a relationship between career runs, which I want that to be our Y variable, and career hits? So in this case, 
when I ran it into SAS on demand for academics, this is what I got out. So I did a proc contents to look at my data. So this is also an exploratory analysis procedure that you can do. And then I ran my proc core, okay? So my var was my X variable, which is career hits. It also could have been your Y. I just decided to make it um, my X variable. In the width statement, I put in my Y variable. Okay, and I also looked at the data set that I was interested in. And this is what I got out is that the correlation coefficient is 0 0.98. So that means that it has a strong positive correlation. It also has this p value down here, which is less than 0 0.001, which means if we did a p value cutoff of 0 0.05, that this is a significant relationship. OK, so I see that these two variables are strongly associated with one another. Thus, career runs could be a good predictor in predicting. I mean, career hits could be a good predictor in predicting career runs. If I were to run just a simple linear regression with these two variables. OK, so outside of that. If I do not have a var statement, okay, and, and I don't even have to have a whiff statement, I would see all of the correlation coefficients across all of the numeric variables in my data set, okay? So in this case, I have the number at bat and career runs being 0 0.22, which is a weak positive association. And we're going to jump into SAS momentarily to look at that, okay? So let's go into SAS Studio, and I'm going to go ahead and just run a basic proc contents, and I'm going to pull in a data set. So on the right-hand side, I'm going to expand libraries. When I expand libraries, I'm going into SAS Help, and I'm going to run in this baseball data set. And I'm going to expand that to see all of my variables in my baseball data set. So I'm going to call sashelp.baseball. And then I'm going to run this procedure, right? And I have a whole video on the proc contents procedure. But pretty much we get a look at the data set. We get how many observations there are. We get how many variables, okay? We get some host information, and then we can get the labels. Because sometimes it may be hard to figure out what is what. So I see career runs is denoted by CR runs, and I see career hits is CR hits. And those are the two variables that I'm interested in looking at when I'm trying to, um, in our example. So I'm going to go back to the code and now I'm going to run the prop core procedure. So prop core data equals my data set again, sas help.baseball. And for my var, I'm just going to put one of those numeric variables in there. It doesn't matter which one, but I'm going to do career hits. And then my width, I'm going to do career runs. And I like to have my data set expanded on the left-hand side so I can just make sure I spell everything correctly, career runs, and then I'm going to hit run, okay? And then when I highlight this and run it, now I get my core procedure. So it's going to give me some simple summary statistics. And then down here is that Pearson correlation coefficient, where I see that we have a Pearson correlation coefficient of 0.98 that's very close to one. One is indicative of a strong positive relationship. So that means as your runs increases, right? So does the hits, all right? So we have a strong positive correlation between the two. And if we were going to associate a p-value with this, we are going to see that we have a p-value of less than 0 0.05, which means that this could be a significant relationship. So this right here could be a good predictor of career runs if I were to run a simple linear regression. Now, what happens when we go ahead and not have our bar and whiff statement, because you can run it without these two, we see that we're going to get everything, okay? So in this case, I have all of the variables, okay, and on the side and the corresponding variables at the top, and I can get the correlation coefficients there, right? So in this case, in my correlation matrix, I should notice that on the diagonal, I have a perfect correlation because a variable is always perfectly correlated with itself. 
So number of times at bat is going to be perfectly correlated with itself. So that's why I get a correlation coefficient of one. So I'm not really in interested in this diagonal here. Okay, but what I am interested maybe is I see the number of runs and the number of times at bat is about 90%. They have a, a strong association. And then I see some weaker associations. So for instance, the major year versus number of home runs, okay, they're weakly associated. Okay, I also have something down here that has a weak association of career times at bat versus the number of runs, okay? So when I have no whiff statement, no var statement, it's going to give me a matrix with all of the numeric variables, okay? So that might be something of interest when you want to look at multicollinearity between more than one variable. Okay. So the last concept we're going to talk about is how to use graphs and proc core, okay? So we have this proc core data equals data set name. And in that first statement, we're going to add this plots equal, okay? And so we can use a matrix, we can use a scatter plot, et cetera. So in the example, we can visualize number of walks, which is denoted by the variable NBB, and career hits versus career runs. Okay, so I see here that in my plot statement, I made a scatter plot, I put in the number of career hits and the number of walks, and then with my whiff statement, I did career run. So let's see how that actually works here. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to change this one. I'm going to say plots equal, and then in parentheses, I'm going to put the word scatter. And then what career hits, I'm just going to choose another numeric variable okay then i'm gonna run this and this is what i get so first thing i get my pearson correlation coefficients i see that career runs and career hits once again has that strong positive association and number of walks has like this weak positive association okay so on the first graph, I get my career hits, I get my career runs, I get the p-value, I get the Pearson correlation coefficient, and I can see as career hits increases, the number of career runs also increases. And I see that I have a little outlier here as well. And then for my walks, I see that mm, there looks like there's a positive association, but this association is much weaker than the top, okay? Where the number of walks looks like as it increases, it can increase the number of career runs, but it's not as strong as above, okay? So that's an example of how you can actually get some of these visuals to help explain some of your data and to further explore your data. Okay, so thank you all for tuning in to ProcCore. Remember that this is a very important procedure for looking at your data. You're going to be able to look at linear relationships amongst variables that can help see if a linear regression would suffice. You can check things like multicollinearity. And what we've learned was that Pearson correlation coefficient, how it has that scale of negative one to one or AKA a strong negative to strong positive association and that correlation does not equal causation. And that for the most part, Proc Core has a very simple syntax where you just need to put in your data set names, the variables that you're interested in, cor in viewing correlations for and running that procedure. So thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Please like, comment, and subscribe to Learning with Jelly, and I will talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.